What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Roundhouse FM. So honestly, a fantastic fight between Austin McBroom and Gibb in what was a great back and forth match with six total knockdowns, I believe, five of which being for Gibb. First things first, credit to McBroom for getting up after four freaking knockdowns and continuing to fight. But at the end of the day, this was a certified beatdown from the big gibber this was a fantastic matchup that showed incredible improvement from him honestly it showed good good talented boxing from austin mcbroom as well but frankly just big gibber was just on a different level tonight now there's a couple key things that i saw that really swayed the course of this fight that really made this fight not go in austin mcbroom's favor even though to me he still looked like quite a skilled and talented boxer there was just a few holes that were too big not to be exploited by someone who's gotten to the level of Gibb, right? Gibb has proven time and time again now, and especially now that not only is he a good boxer, but he's a boxer that's getting better and better every time he goes out there. And it seems like every time he comes out, he has a new element to his game that he's developed. And there was two big new elements for him in this matchup that really changed things. And Austin, frankly, didn't show too, too much improvement and had a game plan that just was really, really counterintuitive to the Anision Gibb that showed up. Austin McBroom was getting ready for the last Gibb. Austin McBroom was getting ready for the Gibb that fought Taylor Holder, getting ready for the Gibb that fought Jake Paul. He was not getting ready for the Gibb that fought him this night. So guys, first things first, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comment on the video, help your boy out with the algorithm. We got to grow this channel. We got to get to 100,000. Let's do it. Um, but let's dive right into this, guys. So first things first is McBroom showed that his game plan was counters, right? He wanted to counter Gibb coming in and he did that decently well right at the start of the fight showed that he was really favoring that left hand right he had that left power hand that Austin has and he actually used it well he landed a right hook and then a left hand down the middle that Gibb wasn't able to block and it knocked him down right and then you see here he's celebrating and he's celebrating a little bit too early because uh job's not finished job's not finished buddy what are you doing <laughs> and frankly credit where credit is due you see Gibb get up goes to the corner and then he takes his nice full 10 count or eight count, whatever they were working with here. But he, he takes his time. He stands there, he regains his composure and he's like, I'm not out of this fight. You knocked me down, good job. All 11 people in the stands have seen you knock me down, but the fight's not over and the fight certainly wasn't over. Guys, after this, after this happens, you see Austin McBroom with all the confidence in the world coming forward, thinking he's about to win this fight. And then after about a minute of Gibb moving, you know, trying to stay alive, again, educated, smart movement as a boxer, Austin comes forward, Gibb lands a right hand of the body, comes upstairs, and like we saw in the previous video where I broke this down, that left hook was there and it landed. And you see it snap Austin's head around and immediately the fight's reset. Immediately, Gibb has gotten Austin's respect and they're back to a back and forth boxing match. And this is where the fight really got exciting because after the first round, this is where we see Gibb kind of get his rhythm. Gibb starts to learn Austin McBroom's tendencies, which frankly, from what I saw, were pretty obvious and it wasn't super, super hard for him to, to get. And this is where I saw big difference in Big Gibber's game. That was his ability to fight moving backwards and Gibb's ability to fight with counters and to counter forward aggression from his opponent, right? It was obvious that McBroom had practiced countering, had practiced deflecting shots and trying to counter. But when he was pressuring, when Gibb started baiting Austin in, he was coming forward, throwing his punches with his hands low, throwing these punches, chin straight up in the air, and Gibb countered effectively. I think this was something they weren't expecting at all. And then when we talk about the punches that Austin McBroom was choosing to use, something that I touched on earlier was the lead uppercut. Guys, the lead uppercut is a high risk, low reward punch. It just isn't to be used often and you have to be a really special special fighter to be able to throw a lead uppercut effectively three different times i saw him try to throw this punch three different times i saw gib crack him every time coming in and throwing that lead hand chin way up in the air gib plants throws a big right hand and lands every single time you know the second round was a good round it was back and forth and this is where we saw gib starting to understand mcbroom you know because mcbroom was doing not too too much right he was showing when he would come forward, he would throw combinations, but he was coming forward so fast, he was almost crowding his own punches, chin way up in the air, and he was getting caught with counters. And then when he was trying to be patient and calculated, what he would do is he would just kind of put his lead hand out, put his lead hand out, try to find it, and then throw that big left hand. Put his lead hand out, try to find it, and throw that big left hand. And it didn't take Gibb very long to start timing that left hand, right? And sometimes 
Austin McBroom would just throw a straight up elbow and elbow Gibb right in the head and Gibb didn't complain. He just fought through it, shouted to him. But the problem is, is when you're coming through and you're not preparing your shots is your opponent not only is prepared for the shot to come so they can absorb it better, right? And we saw that even when McBroom did land and he did land powerfully a couple times, he'd be bouncing it off the forehead of Gibb and Gibb would be able to absorb it in his stance, right? So it would bounce it off the head instead of when Austin McBroom was coming forward and getting cracked and his chin's up, head's up, his head's getting snapped way back, right? It's a much different effect you have on your opponent when that happens. And once, once Gibb timed it, he starts blading the shot, right? So the, the left hand's coming and he's blading the shot and he's blocking it. And then what turned the fight was in the third round, Gibb times the shot, sees it's coming, absorbs it in his face, right? But it's because he's expecting it and he knows it's coming, it's not gonna knock him out, right? You get knocked out by the shots you're not seeing. Overhand, right hand for him, clean across the job, McBroom and dropped him at the end of the third round. Near the end of the third round, Austin tries to come forward again. And this time Gibb drops him, Right hand to the body, left hook upstairs, drops him again. This shot landed continuously. And guys, I hate to say I was right, but sometimes it feels good for me to go, you know, maybe I do know a little bit about this boxing thing. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe I'm not talking straight out of my ass, just 50% out of my ass. <laughs> but when we see that Austin wasn't accurately defending against left hooks in his training, when we see him coming forward with this big lead uppercut, we see these gaps, and these are the exact gaps that Gibb took advantage of. These are the exact punches that really cost Austin at the end of the fight. And Gibb drops it again at the end of the third round with that left hook. And Austin, frankly, gets lucky. The round ends, goes into the fourth round. And this is where, honestly, I was so, so freaking impressed with Gibb. Because Gibb's got this guy hurt. He's knocked him down twice. He's going for the kill. But instead of just rushing forward, he took his time with it. He was clinical, and he was tactical in his approach. This is like... This is like experienced boxer stuff. You know, this is like guy that's been there for years stuff. So to see a guy, you know, former YouTuber, guy that I'm sure he's still a YouTuber, but I mean, he's, you know, he's a pro boxer now, technically. Guy that isn't some super athlete. To be able to understand the clinical approach, to be patient and calculated, even though you see his face, he's freaking amped to the moon and come in and land two more knockdowns before the knockout was freaking fantastic, you know? And, and McBroom is coming forward in the fourth round. His defense is gone, right? He's tired, he's exhausted, he's hurt, he's beat up, and he's just trying to land big shots. But this is what I talk about when I say you got to focus on the fundamentals because you don't rise to the occasion. Your boxing doesn't get better throughout the course of the fight. Your boxing, you fall to the level of training. You fall to the habits you've developed. And if you aren't developing strong defensive habits, you're going to get cracked. Your hands are going to come down, your chin's going to come up, and you're going to get cracked. And there was just... It was just patient, clinical punches, clean left hook, big right hands, and Gibb eventually won this fight. And then to win, it was the final punch was again, McBroom's loading up on the, these big left hands, right? Left hand, Gibb counters it, cracks him, drops him bad. And then the final combination, he tried to throw a right hook, Gibb countered that again with a right hand, and the fight was over. And frankly, guys, this was a super, super fun one. Six knockdowns. Give Austin McBroom the credit he deserves for getting up and fighting through those. Freaking Gibbs showing patience, aggression, defensive responsibility moving forward, good counters, being able to fight backwards. A complete boxing game. A complete game. And this is what we hadn't seen from him in the past, right? We'd seen great aggression. We'd seen controlled aggression. We saw good combinations. We didn't see fighting backwards. We didn't see counter punches. This is all new stuff. This is all additives to his game getting better and better and better, still durable, still strong, still cardio city. Man, Big Gibber showed up. And honestly, Austin McBroom to me, he showed that he's a good boxer. He deserves to be within this space. He's talented and he's skilled, but Gibb was just too much for him, man. And frankly, McBroom gets crushed by KSI. So now we don't know who KSI is fighting, right? He said maybe he'd fight Gibb. We'll see if that's a reality. Obviously they're buddies. I think I, I have no problem with friends fighting. I don't think that you need to hate each other to have a boxing match. But at the end of the day, it's up to them. Frankly, I can't wait to see what's next. Guys, let me know what you thought about this fight in the comments. What are some things that I missed? Let me know what you saw that I didn't see. I love it when you guys point out some great things. Man, some of you guys leave some freaking paragraphs to me. I try my best to read them all. And there's so many of you guys that have like fantastic takes, right? I'll see these like three paragraphs and it's awesome takes and I freaking love it, man. I love the community. I love the support. Thanks so much, guys. Take it easy. This is Roundhouse FM. Bye.